In the last video, we went over how RFID works and how to set up your own RFID demo where you can scan random cards to see there are unique identification numbers. Then you were able to decide if that card is good or bad. So if you wanted to authorize something, not authorize something, whatever you wanted to do, identify somebody, you could do that using the unique identification numbers. For everything we're gonna do in this video, it's gonna help a lot to understand by watching the other video and then coming back to here. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it and then come back. So as I said earlier, in the last video, we read cards. In this one, we're gonna be writing to them. When it comes to writing information to these RFID cards, we're going to need a special card called a M-I-F-A-R-E tag. Usually it's written like MIF Air, whatever it is, and then one kilobyte or whatever the storage is. In this case, this white card here is a MIF Air, I don't know what to call it, one kilobyte tag, which means it has up to one kilobyte of storage. I don't think these tags are gonna work, but we're gonna have to test it out and see if these are able to store any information. These special tags are small electronic devices that use RFID technology to store and transmit information. If you actually take a really bright light, and I think I'm just gonna lower it down a bit, and you put it under these cards, you can kind of see the coil of wire that goes all the way around the card. And then in the top left there, the little chip where you can store data and all the RFID magic happens. I wonder if you can actually do that through these two. It's gonna be a little bit hard because they're so small, but. I could see it in person, but I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up. There's a coil of wire around this way, and then right in the middle, there's that little storage chip. So these special tags can store data by writing binary information into memory blocks within the RFID chip that we just showed earlier with the light. And each block can hold a small amount of data. Then we can read that data through RFID and mess with it, change it, do whatever we want with it. But we can pretty much store up to one kilobyte of information on these cards, which is not a lot, but at least it's something. Maybe we can put a little message and when you scan that message goes through. Now to write to these cards, we're gonna be using the same exact system that we built in the last video. So like I said, if you haven't seen that, go watch that video, connect it up like we did it in that video, and then come back here so you can work with this part or so you can at least follow along from here. So just plug in the Arduino with the previous demo and let's get started on the code to write information to these cards. Also, I'm not exactly sure if these key tags are MIFAIR, whatever it's called. I think this one is. We're gonna have to check that when we read the information off of the cards. So if you watched the last video, you found out that you do have to install a library over here for your RFID reader. Once you install libraries, they typically come with examples that you can pick out here and file examples. And then just go down to the library you downloaded, which for us was this one, MFRC522. And we're just going to go up here into dump info. This is just a demo file that you can use to read any information off of the card. Pretty much anything the card will hold will get dumped into the serial monitor using this file. So it's not organized. There's nothing special about it. It just gives you absolutely everything that it can read off of these cards. I'm just going to select my board here. I'm going to upload that code to the board. And then I want to scan our cards and see first off if they're the MIFAIR, whatever it's called, and then actually see the storage blocks get dumped in the console. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go serial monitor. We're just gonna see what it's being used, 96, 96. Scan card to see data blocks. Okay, so we're gonna take first our, what I think is compatible Mifair card. We're gonna just put it on top here. So we'll open this up a little bit bigger so we can understand what's happening. First thing is the unique identification number, which is this right here, these eight numbers. Then we have this, I'm not sure what the SAK is. And then we have our type, which is Mifair one kilobyte. So we know this thing can store some information. And if it wasn't obvious, here is our massive data block. I'll put a picture up on the screen, but pretty much this card separates into a bunch of different data blocks and then you can store information in all these blocks. It's not a lot of information, but there's definitely some things you can do with this. But this is what it looks like when it comes out raw. So if we go to the bottom, we could see zero, zero, there's some things being written down. But if we go to zero, one, to zero, two, three, and all the way up to 1563, no important information written down here. I'm guessing this is just saying end of block. Okay, so we know that card is good to go. Let's clear the console and let's scan one of these tags and see what it says. Oh, look at that. So these are also actually applicable. Uh, I, I pulled the card off so it couldn't read the rest. But look at that, Mifair one kilobyte. Okay, so these actually work too. So we can store information on these blue tags and we can store information on this big key card. And that's by going here. And I guess you do need to hold the card or whatever on until it's done reading. Cause if I pull it off right now, you can see it fails. So I need to hold it there, let it read through the card, through the storage, and then pull it off when it's done. That's important to know. So you can't just walk up, scan your gym tag and leave. You have to scan and hold it there for a little bit. Cause if you just run and leave, like it shows right there, timeout in communication. All right, that's good to know. So we're not gonna close this file. We're just gonna keep it open on the side. And then I want to go and open up a new file in the Arduino editor. 
So just file new, or I already have one open right here. So for this demo of writing information from the reader to the card, we're just gonna use a pre-written code by Rudy Schlaff from makercourse.com. This is just a good demo and there's no other way to write it. So I'm just gonna use this from the internet. As always, we call the libraries, we call the pins. I have a feeling we're gonna have to change these because in our demo, we didn't use those pins. Then we call and we make our MFRC reader object, which is what we did in the last project when we were reading information. Then we have our typical setup here. And then down here is where things start to get complicated. But you can see there's a bunch of different functions that do a bunch of different things. Like we have a function here that reads the blocks. We have a function here that writes to the blocks. And then at the bottom, what is this? This is read block. So I guess we have those two main functions and the rest happens inside the loop. We also make a variable called block content and we set it to 16 characters. And this is going to be our array of information that we're gonna be storing in the key tags. So they put subscribe and then empty thing. We could do whatever we want. So I think this does have to be 16. So let's see if we remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so it's 15 starting from zero. So I just replaced what it said there with testing RFID one, two, three, four. This is a pretty simple line and there's no way anyone else would write this. So if we're scanning our card and that comes up, we know that it worked. Over here, there's some nice notes that uh, Rudy put that explains to you kind of what's happening. Like you could see here that we're skipping every fourth block, which when we saw in our earlier project file, the dump info, every fourth one had something written. This is apparently called a trailer block that holds some information where to go. Yeah, so you can see up here, it's a trailer bark for access security information. And in our case, we're gonna be writing into block number two. Let's connect our Arduino up and upload this piece of code. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna open up our serial monitor. And I'm gonna open this up wide. And now I want to scan this card. I'm gonna leave it there and we're gonna see what happens in the console. So we can see card selected. Two is a data block, so it checks if two is a data block. Block was written, block was read, and then red block testing RFID one, two, three, four. Now, one thing I would like to do is go back into dump info, this file right here. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when we read the first time here, uh, I guess it got deleted. But when we read the first time, we went through zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, whatever, and we saw that they were all empty. Now I wanna see what happens if we go over here into dump info, we upload this code to the Arduino and we scan our card if there's gonna be something written in the zero two line. Because before it was zero all the way across and I'll put a picture on, of that on the screen. Now I wanna compare it with what we're gonna get when we put the card on here. So I put the card on here, I'm gonna let it read. You can see five, four, three, two, one. And now when we go to zero, 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 one, zero, two, we can see one is still empty, but zero two now has something written in there. And that shows us that we were actually writing information on this card. So that lets us know that what we did actually worked, that we actually wrote some information on this card. If I take one of our old tags and scan them, I'm just gonna hold it there and scroll down. You could see that this thing started the same. And when you go to zero two, it's completely empty. And if we repeated the process of going back to the other file, scanning it, writing to it, whatever, we would see that we're getting the same result. What we can also do is just go here and comment out the write block function. And then we have down here, read block, read block, and then read the row. Okay, so let's go upload that to the board and let's see what happens when we try this. I'm hoping it doesn't break the program, but it should work if we scan the card. There we go. So card block was selected, block was read, and then what was read off the block. If it doesn't find anything, does it just exit the program and not let us know? That could be it. Ah, look at that. So we scanned a card, block was red and there was absolutely nothing there, zero, zero, zero. So it just gave us kind of this empty air looking thing. But one more time, if I take the old card and I go scan it, uh, it's stuck in the loop. Just refresh that, go to serial monitor, scan the card. You might have to just reset the Arduino. I'm guessing this is a thing in the code, but if I just scan the card, boom, we could see that now we're getting that. And if I scan one of the other key tags, you can see that we're getting that. It would also be cool that if a card is being used by somebody and you want to change it with someone else, 
that you could just rewrite the information on the card. Unfortunately, I don't think you can change the unique identification number on these, but you could definitely do something cool with the data blocks that we went over today. So instead of a 16 character, so instead of a little character string that we put in saying, what was it? Testing RFID 1234, you can maybe put the name of an employee and when they get rid of that card, they get fired, whatever it is, you can give that card to somebody else and change that name of the employee to somebody else. That's it for RFID and I guess the basics of RFID. I definitely want to use this in more projects in the future. If you have any questions, anything you want to know, let me know in the comments or join the Discord to get some help. And if you enjoy these type of videos, do me a favor and just give the video a like and subscribe so I can keep making this kind of stuff. See you in the next.